In this video, we are going to take a look at six comic books that have outperformed my entire stock portfolio. These books have increased in value by 53% since I purchased them. And in this video, we are going to take a look at those books to answer the question of what are the must have Marvel comics that are investment worthy. We are going to look at that in this video. But before we get to the books, I want to acknowledge the sponsor of this video, Comics price guide. There is a link down in the description. I encourage you to check them out because if you have not been to this website, you are definitely missing out. They have one of the largest pricing databases around with more than 1 million comics. Not only do they provide values for raw books, but they also have them for graded books as well. The link is in the description. Check them out. With that said, let's get to the books. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. As I mentioned in that brief intro, we are going to take a look at six comics that have increased in value by 53% since I acquired them. Now, this is not a video that is essentially saying you should go out and only invest in comics. I am, however, attempting to highlight some books that I believe are great alternative forms of investment. I still have an entire portfolio of traditional investments that include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, etc. But I'm also a comic book collector that recognizes the long term value of comics. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video are those books that I think are must have investment comics specifically for Marvel. And only one book in this stack is actually in negative territory. All of the others have performed incredibly well. But to to that point, I actually want to start with the one that's in negative territory and talk a little bit about that. This very first book is Incredible Hulk issue number one, and this one came back uh, at a 2.0, or technically I bought it at a 2.0. Now, even though I paid a little bit more than what I should have for this book, I went into it with my eyes wide open. And in fact, the value of this book had increased beyond what I paid for a period of time. But with the economy being where it is, things have pulled back and now I am in negative territory with this book, but I do not regret it at all. This is a hard silver age book to find. There are not a lot of them out there and not a lot of people want to sell them. And so I am very pleased to have this one in the collection, even though it's in negative territory right now, because I believe in the long term value of this book. I also love the book. So it's important to remember that these are not just investments for me. These are books that I actually enjoy. I read them and I enjoy them. The next book is another fantastic Silver Age book, much like Incredible Hulk issue number one. This is Fantastic Four issue number one from 1961. This is a wonderful investment worthy book from Marvel. It doesn't get much better than this book right here. Uh, this is a first generation, I do believe, a CGC slab. Uh, I honestly don't know if this book was cleaned or pressed. I don't think that it was, so I think that there's actually some potential for a grade bump here, uh, but this is, again, a great book that has some long-term potential, and uh, fingers crossed will be in the collection for a long time to come. The next book that I want to show you is Amazing Fantasy issue number 15, a core book. There is no doubt about that. Spider-Man Peter Parker is arguably the most famous character around and that might be for both marvel and dc uh this is his origin and first appearance i bought this book back in 2020 and again this book's value has increased dramatically i can say the same thing for the fantastic four book as well i purchased it at the right time values have increased even though they've come down they are still north of where i i paid and again the same thing can be said for this book right here in fact the person that i bought it from reached out and said would you be interested in selling that book back to me it was maybe a joke maybe not a joke a lot of those books right there were more recent purchases made during the pandemic phase. This next one is one that was purchased long before the pandemic was a thing. I actually bought this book 
back in 2018 and it was actually left in the bushes outside of my house when I purchased it. And this book I think has the best return out of all of the books that we just looked at primarily because I bought it long before the pandemic. This is X-Men issue number one, the origin and first appearance of the X-Men, a fantastic copy. This is a 5.0 with off-white to white pages. Again, it does not get any better than the X-Men and the X-Men have not been seen in the MCU. So again, this book has a tremendous amount of potential. I absolutely love this team and this comic. And so the at this point, people may be thinking maybe we're only going to look at Silver Age books because that's essentially what we've seen thus far, books from the 60s. But there are two other books that are sitting here that I think are investment worthy comics. They are both from the Bronze Age and they are both fantastic books. First up, we have arguably the second most popular Marvel character, and some of you probably know who I'm talking about. This is Incredible Hulk issue number 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine, a fantastic cover, fantastic book and character. And this one again has, I think, some long-term potential. This one is an 8.5, again, a respectable copy of this book and just just fantastic. There's no way a around that one. I actually had two copies of this at one point, uh, but uh, sold my lower grade off to be able to buy one of the other books that is in the stack here. It's a great way to be able to, to use the books that you have to buy the other books that you want. The very last book that I'll show you here is potentially my favorite X-Men book of all time. It, it features my preferred team and it's also a good read as opposed to X-Men issue number one. This is giant size X-Men issue number one. And again, just a great book. This is the first appearance of the new X-Men, the first appearance of Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus, and also Thunderbird, a great, great book. This book's value has also come down like many of the others and might represent a great buying opportunity because of where values are right now. I will also tell you that when I bought that book, it was years ago. I did not pay a whole lot of money for that book and it also has returned a healthy amount of money. With that said, my hope is that you've enjoyed this rundown of must-have investment-worthy Marvel comics. And if so, if you've enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I want to encourage you to do that as well. And lastly, if you have not yet picked up a copy of Isolation issue number two from Swolger Publishing, I want to encourage you to head over to ReggieCollects.com, take a look at the covers that we are offering up and pick up a copy. Isolation issue number two is a fantastic story that I think that you will enjoy. And again, it's available on ReggieCollects.com. With that said, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at ReggieCollects. Take care. Rolling, rolling, rolling.